everybody, welcome or welcome back. My name is Sarah and today I'm coming at you with my 2020 reading goals slash challenges. So I have four kind of goals or challenges that I want to achieve in 2020 with my reading and I want to talk to you all about them today. I'm not going to tell you in too much details like all of the books that I plan to read in 2020 or the series. This is for next week's video. Today we're just talking about some goals and and some challenges. So without any further ado, let's jump into this. This intro was really, really repetitive, but please bear with me. It is the end of the semester. I have two brain cells left. So the first challenge that I actually want to talk to you about today is not really a challenge because I intend on not partaking in it. And that is my Goodreads reading goal. I have always set my Goodreads reading goal at the beginning of each year, like January 1st. It is the first thing I do when I wake up. I'm not kidding. It was literally the first thing that I did January 1st, 2019. But for 2020, I actually decided that I'm not going to set myself a reading goal. And the reason for that is because I want to know if I'm going to read as much, even if I don't set my goal to like 100 books, because that is the goal that I've set for myself this year. Last year, I think it was 60 and I ended up reading like 104 instead of 60 which was kind of wild um, I clearly underestimated myself there but yeah this year 100 I did it I totally smashed it but next year I want to try something else because I wonder if the reason why I read so much and I read so intensely and I read so many books so fast is because I have this mindset that I need to reach that goal. So I want to know if it's going to change anything or not and if I'm actually going to like take my time more with the books that I want to read instead of like rushing sometimes I don't always rush through books but sometimes I do and I feel that Goodreads pressure on my back that being said it is completely possible that I might cave in in like two months in the year or like six months in the year I'm going to just set myself a challenge I don't know we shall see but yeah I I want to try something different so I'm not going to set it this year so that's the first one of my challenges which is not really a challenge because once again I'm not like going to try and force myself to read more I'm just gonna try to enjoy all of the books and see if I actually do read as much if I don't have that number in mind <laughs> so that was the first goal or challenge the second one is actually about readathons I did participate in certain readathons this year I participated in the reading rush I participated I think in the biblio games that's what it's called yeah but one readathon that I really really want to do in 2020 is the owls readathon and that if you don't know is a Harry Potter inspired readathon organized by book roast in which you basically take the exams that they take in Harry Potter but into the format of a readathon so you have a prompt for each class and you read a book for each prompt because you actually choose your like magic career at the beginning and so you know like how many classes you have to pass and then after that you actually also have the newts readathon that takes place I think in August I think the owl is in May and then the uh, newts are in August and it's basically the same concept it's like the seventh year like exams in Harry Potter. I've seen so many people participate in these readathons and they seem like so much fun but I actually did not participate last year and I totally regret it. So one of my goals for 2020 is definitely to participate. I don't know yet what career I'm going to pursue but I definitely cannot wait. Another readathon I definitely want to participate in is the Reading Rush. I've participated in the Reading Rush last year and also the year before and I always love it so so much it's basically this week and it is organized by Ariel Bissett and you have seven prompts and you just have to read like as many books as you can in a week and I think that is just so so much fun like so many people participate in that readathon and there are like Instagram challenges and video challenges and it is just such a good time and such a celebration of reading every year that I definitely will not miss it in 2020. So that is it for the readathons. If I do find some other ones that I want to participate in, of course I'm going to if I see any other that seem like a lot of fun. But for now, these are the two that I want to participate in absolutely in 2020. So far these like goals or challenges are not too hard, but the third one is where it gets really interesting because 
I want to read classics. I know, shocking. Who is she? If you know me, you probably know that I have a very weird love-hate relationship with classics. And it is mostly hate, let's be honest. I don't love classics that much. I don't necessarily agree with everybody who thinks that these books are like the best books ever. But there are some of them that actually interest me. And I have decided to challenge myself to read at least one classic a month. In 2020. So I actually have a list here of all of the classics that I want to read and what I think I'm going to do is that I'm going to write them on a piece of paper, put them in a mug and just like choose one randomly every single month unless there is one that I really really want to read that month. And that being said, the first classic I want to read in 2020 is actually the book that I plan to start the year with and that classic is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I love the musical Les Miserables so so much. It is like my favorite musical of all time probably. I just love it with all of my heart and I've always wanted to read the original story and this is a beast. It is so so big but I've read another book by Victor Hugo, I've read Notre Dame de Paris and really really enjoyed it so I think I'm actually going to like it and also just because I love the characters, I love the story obviously because I love the musical so much so yeah that is the first classic that I want to read this year, next year, in 2020 anyway and I'm going to start with that one in January because why not start with the scariest of them all because Jeez, I could literally kill someone with that. So yeah, we are going to start with Les Miserables, which is maybe a terrible idea, but only time will tell. Um, and then the rest of the list is mainly female authors. The first one of those female authors being, of course, Queen Jane Austen. <laughs> I have read Pride and Prejudice before, but I am actually going to reread it because the first time that I read it, I was younger. I didn't really know like how to handle Jane Austen's style, so I feel like I'm actually going to love it more when I reread it next year. Actually, I hope, fingers crossed, because if I don't, I'm gonna be very, very sad. Actually, if I end up not really liking Jane Austen, I'm going to be very ashamed of myself. But yeah, so Pride and Prejudice, the second one of hers that I want to read is Sense and Sensibility. Then we also have Emma and North Anger Abbey. And I think these are almost all of her books. I don't know. These are the ones that like I've heard about and I think I'm going to enjoy. So these are the ones that I'm going to focus on. The next classics that I want to talk about are actually just a bunch of them and these are Shakespeare plays because the only Shakespeare play I've ever read is a Midsummer Night's Dream. Is that how it's called? I don't even know. Oh my god, that's awful. But yeah, uh, that one in the forest with like the fairies and the weird people. So yeah, I want to read more Shakespeare plays ever since I've read If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio because that book is so good and it has so many Shakespeare references and now I just want to know like everything. Like I need all the tea on Shakespeare. So I want to read a couple of his comedies and also a couple of his tragedies and because they're smaller I thought maybe it could be possible for me to like read some of them during one month and then the others like during another month because I don't want to read all of it. Like some of the like historical ones really don't have any appeal to me. Oh, I also read Romeo and Juliet. I had forgotten about that. I'm not gonna reread Romeo and Juliet. I don't care about it. So yeah, let me just grab a list of like all of his plays because I clearly don't know all of them. I mean, who are we kidding here? So, complete list of Shakespeare plays. All right, so for the comedies, I would like to read, as I said, as you like it. Did I say that? I don't remember. Uh, probably uh, Much Ado About Nothing, Taming of the Shrew, The Tempest. And then for the tragedies, I would like to read Hamlet, uh, King Lear, Macbeth, and that is all. So these are not like too many of them. It's not even like half of them, but honestly, I don't really care. These are the ones that interest me. So I'm going to start with them, and if I enjoy them, I might read more. Also, please don't judge me if I don't read them in like the original English, because I understand absolutely nothing when I try to read them in the original English because oh god like my French brain is like what is going on here so I might read you know like the no fear Shakespeare that has like the original English and then the modern English on the side I don't know yet but 
I don't think that like the original language is going to be possible for me because oh my god it is I don't know, in my brain it's just complete nonsense. Maybe I'm just dumb, who knows? <laughs> then the next classic that I want to challenge myself to read is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I have read Watering Heights by Emily Bronte and did not like it, like, at all. I just, I did not enjoy that book, like, whatsoever. But I really want to read Jane Eyre because it really seems like an interesting story and I've seen the movie adaptation with, like, Michael Fassbender and really enjoyed it. I know so many people dislike this adaptation, but I, for whatever reason, really like it. So I'm very, very interested to read Jane Eyre. Then the next classic that I want to read is actually another French classic, and that is Le Deuxième Sex by Simone de Beauvoir, which is a feminist essay that I have actually never read, but I keep hearing about it in my classes at university and also just like everywhere because it is so iconic so I really really want to get to that and actually read it because it is one of the most like important texts in feminism and I haven't read it yet so yeah <laughs> then I also want to read The Bell Jar by Sylvia Platt which is more of like a modern classic and I really don't know too much about it but I want to read it because I've heard so many amazing things about it so that's also one I want to read and then the last two ones are kind of like spooky ones and the first one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley which I had actually planned to read this year but I did not because I'm terrible. And the other one is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, if I remember her name correctly. And that is kind of like a gothic novel about these people who live in a castle and there's a murder or something. So yeah, these are the two last classics on this list. More kind of like a spooky vibes. I'm probably going to keep them for October and November. But like I said, basically, if I know which one I want to read during that month, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. If I don't, I'm just going to put all of the names in a mug and just like take one out and just see like what fate has in store for me but yeah I'm really really excited about this challenge I'm actually like kind of hopeful because I've read two classics this year and really really enjoyed them it was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott I actually ended up really loving them so I feel like this could be a good idea and if I just don't like a book like if I'm reading it and I really really don't enjoy it I'm just gonna put it aside and just DNF it like I would do with like any other normal book like I'm not going to force myself to read it because that's not going to be fun <laughs> I definitely think that this is going to be the most challenging of these challenge slash goals but now let's move on to the last one because it's a fun one <laughs> I have decided that 2020 is the year in which I reread the entire Harry Potter series so starting in September 2020 I am going to reread the entire Harry Potter series from book one to seven and I'm actually going to read the first four in the illustrated edition sorry this is so heavy um, because I own them now. Well, not the fourth one, but I'm going to buy it eventually and then read it. So yeah, it's just been too long since I've read Harry Potter and I really, really want to read the series in its entirety in English because the only time that I read it in its entirety was in French and it has been like a couple of years. So I really, really want to read Harry Potter and starting in September, I think is the perfect time. I'm gonna have like four months to finish it and it's just going to be so magical and I cannot wait. All right so these are my four reading goals or challenges for 2020 as you can tell I'm being very kind to myself because I hate to force myself to read things that I don't want to read or to do things that I don't want to do so these are just like small challenges and I'm very excited to actually try and do all of them especially the classics one because I'm probably going to have a lot of opinions let me know down below what are your 2020 reading challenges or goals I hope you really enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye!